just set this up here because it's saying that it's not live as usual. Always does that right at the beginning. So like, <clears throat> like purposely causing a delay. So anyway, guys, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, about this. I got this. Actually, I got it two weeks ago. And I haven't had time to do anything or make a video. Uh, I don't think I'm going to make a separate video on it. This will be... This will be it, and you can ask your questions uh, based on the limited things I know about it. Um, so the format will be, you know, 30 minutes of me talking about the given topic, and then uh, obviously the Q&A section, which follows the 30 minutes, can be about talking about what I know about this, which isn't much. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about it, you, you can continue to ask. So... <clears throat> Um, if, so if you don't want to stay beyond the 30 minutes, uh, that's fine. And some of you are actually very judgmental and saying you're very repetitive in the live stream. Uh, okay. This is live. I don't have a script. I don't know what I'm going to say. So it's not like when I do a video, you know, I know what I'm going to say. Cause I, you know, it's a planned video in a live stream. You don't know what you're going to say. Cause I'm reacting to you guys. So yeah, it, those are like really hurtful comments and I don't really want to see those. So I guess uh, if I see those, I just take it off because I don't really want to think about it. Anyway, uh, this arrived, like I said, two weeks ago. I did get an email informing me that it was going to arrive soon. I was on the, uh, see, I don't even remember now because it's been so long. I think the term was the evergreen batch, evergreen batch, which is one of the early batches um apparently not that early so yeah so the evergreen batch is only shipping is only shipping now and uh yeah i ordered this before covid the year before covid so 20 yeah what is it uh 20 late 2019 yeah so yeah like the the like mid 2019 i think is when i ordered it and now that the 2020 was COVID, 21 22 and now here we are in 23 so yeah and just got it now <clears throat> uh somebody said that uh, there, there were there's there were some some comment here that uh likely my comment will be my review will be uh, biased because i sell another phone you know what? I've been supportive of just about every phone model that takes you off Google. I, you know, I've been consistent with this, and one of the other ones that I've supported over the years was the Pine Phone. I do have the Pine Phone, and I've I wasn't able to use it very well, and I'll explain that. And that's the same problem with this one as well. Uh, and I, I'm going to be frank with you: if you're not a Linux user, you're probably not going to appreciate what's what's in this phone. Uh, but if you're a Linux user, you will see certain things that are familiar and uh, you might, you know, it might interest you as a project phone, but not necessarily as an end user phone. I don't think, I don't think it's ready for prime time. It's an end user phone. Uh, there's a lot of development that, is, that still has to happen here. And um, uh, let me, we'll go, in, go into that, but let me just do a semi unboxing obviously i already opened it but so that's how it comes and let me open it for you and obviously this is not the first time i've opened it but uh comes like that with the plastic obviously very neat not like this and oh my gosh it's really tight let me just remove that it's yeah it's a very tight fit i i knew i had a problem even taking it out you know multiple times here okay so there there is the phone and i'm gonna say to you right now that it is quite heavy it is, it's a very heavy phone now uh just for comparison there's a brax 2 phone here yeah it's it's quite a bit this is lighter this is heavier clearly heavier now thickness wise with a case it's just slightly thicker it's a very thick phone without a case so it's a very thick phone and i don't know how you get a case for this 
So that's one of the problems you're going to have is, you know, a custom case. Um, but, you know, because they beveled, they beveled the edges there, it doesn't seem as thick as, as it is, but it's actually pretty thick. So, and this is what a case, without a case would be, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to guess maybe uh, uh, two or three centimeters, a uh, millimeter uh, uh, thicker. And that's without a case. That's without a case. <clears throat> it's quite a bit heavy, yes. Uh, otherwise, the construction looks, looks pretty solid. It's plastic, but... The finish is not one that gets fingerprints or scratches. It looks uh, looks like a like a scratch resistant kind of uh, of uh, plastic in there. And uh, yeah, the only thing is it's it's really heavy. So so anyway, <clears throat> when you actually uh, turn this on, and I, let me just make a statement here about this. This is not the first Librem Five I've handled. Somebody actually gave me a Librem 5 uh, a year ago, I think. And um, it ran for like, I don't know, one minute. <laughs> and then I was never able, <coughs> I was never able to run it again. I don't know how to run it. Uh, I plugged it in and other than that, I don't know how to run it. So I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but or the battery or something wrong with the phone. But... I still have, I have another Librem 5 that I have not been able to turn on. So this one, um, I magically was able to turn it on. It's very hard to turn it on. There, there's quite a few steps here. And it's just the way that they configured it to to use Linux on mobile. And, and I'll get into that in a second here. Um, but there's very limited functionality here, really. Um, I was kind of angry when I first got it and you know I was just playing around with it and I said okay what do most people do with a phone so I said okay let me take a picture and then I took a picture and the Zucker hung I could not log in and I had to wait for it to discharge before I could reboot it and then when you do that then I you know ask for a passcode I don't know what the passcode was and then I had to read the manual again to figure out what the default password is. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so I'm going to enter now. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what's in the manual. And then, you know, there it is for you. Uh, and I did notice this, but if you look at the camera icon, there's a construction under construction symbol on there. I did not see that right at the top there. There's an under construction symbol. And uh, yeah, and true enough, it doesn't work. So the camera does not work. Okay, so so basically many, many things don't work. And I'll tell you other things that uh, have been a problem with these uh, was overheating. And it was hot when I was charging, it was quite hot. The phone was hot. And as a consequence of being hot, the other thing that you need to know about the phone is <clears throat> that uh, it doesn't last very long. Uh, I, I, I remember the very first version only lasted eight hours. I, I don't know, I haven't tested it, but chances are not gonna last long either. So, so, and that's the same problem with the Pine phone. So that's actually, if you're gonna ask me what's holding back the uh, Linux phones, and that includes the Pine phone, and I really like the Pine Phone people. They're they're really legit. They're they're very uh, good people. Uh, I've you know I met all the not all but I met a couple of the players. The owner uh, who's in uh, Northern California somewhere, and um, um, Lucas. And um, yeah, and they're, they're like a good bunch on Pine on the Pine, Pine Phone. Much much more reliable company than than Purism. Um, there's something scammy about this company, I have to admit, but the uh, the Pine Phone people are not scammy at all, and they've been very, very uh, uh, forthcoming, and they they hardly charge anything for the phone. It was it wasn't intended to make any profit. So, <clears throat> the problem I think is in general it's it's a Linux issue because Linux wasn't made to handle power saving 
on uh, mobile. So Linux itself is not a mobile operating system. And there are many, many limitations because it was not designed to handle mobile. So these are all experimental. So if you understand that, uh, you might enjoy playing with this because it's a Linux machine. You can go to terminal, maybe put in a keyboard and actually use it like a Linux device. And, uh, you know, write code and do such things on it. Uh, which you theoretically can do, but you probably have to keep it plugged in. This is not something that I would consider to be a real mobile device. It's not. Uh, it's not. <clears throat> it's not really at that stage yet. And I, I wish them well. I, I wanted to get to that point <coughs> <coughs> where I can recommend to you that there are other options. I don't want to be the only uh, type of phone. Uh, offered where you can say well somebody says you know I, I offer my own phone um, you know I sell this phone because you don't have any option I've sold other phones just trying to give you solutions now I don't obviously sell these and I don't sell pine phones but if they work I'll tell you yeah go go ahead and go go get it uh, I'm not I'm not going to to tell you otherwise I I, I am going to be truthful with you though as far as which kind of population might might want to use something like this. For, for one thing, this is really, really expensive. So I paid seven, I, 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 don't, I don't remember anymore, close to 800 bucks for this, okay? So it's a very expensive phone. Uh, and you know, it, it looks like, you know, it's well made. Uh, obviously we sell these for, you know, half that. So uh, we're selling these phones for 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 uh, four twenty currently. So this is half the cost of this. Um, this is Android. This is Linux. I wish Linux were more successful. In fact, I was going to make a video, but I guess I don't have to because I'm going to just tell you right now that uh, unfortunately there's a problem with Linux. You know succeeding in this space they have a lot of work to do and nobody's really investing in it for a while there i was uh, trying to tell you to go with uh, ubuntu touch which is a another linux phone and uh, it, they don't have their own hardware initially and uh, they said we're going to support the pine phone and lo and behold years later the pine phone still has the same problem and <clears throat> the same and the problem with the pine phone uh running ubuntu touch it's the same as any of the other operating systems, and that's the lack of power saving. And they've changed the chips, and they've done some things internally. They haven't changed the internals of this. This is as it was designed four years ago, or whenever they designed this. And it, you can kind of tell. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, slightly faster than a Raspberry Pi, if you're going to ask me. It's not very fast. I mean, the browsing is not very fast. Uh, <clears throat> It'll probably frustrate a lot of you uh, because, I mean, comparing a Android, you know, an Android phone, a much cheaper Android phone to this, you know, it's, this is, you know, so much faster. I mean, to be honest, the, uh, you know, there's, you know, it, this is pretty fast. Okay. I couldn't do that to this. I couldn't do that. I mean, it's very, it's kind of slow. It, it kind of drags there. Okay, so it's a slow processor, and there are so many bugs in here. I I crashed. I told you I crashed in camera. I tra I crashed in settings, and it'll probably crash everywhere here. So it's not really. Uh, so then it reboots. One of the things that you know, just to show you the 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 main interface problem here, it's when you you uh, first start the phone. It's try They're trying to push encryption on the phone now. On the Pine phone, they're not trying to do that, so they they don't try to encrypt it. This one. They want to do encryption, so they actually encrypt the phone when you sign in, and then you have to to put the passcode so that the encryption can can uh, can run. But it's separate from the user interface, so it's really difficult because you 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 don't have any kind of interface. It doesn't tell you anything, and it's just asking you for some code. And then uh, I didn't know what the code was, but then I read the, the manual, and it said one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I put that in, and then. 
there was no response on the screen. It just sat there for a long time with just a blank screen. And I said, what's going on? Do I need to, did it hang? W what happened? I mean, for a normal person, you'd be screaming at me and, uh, and, um, <clears throat> and uh, calling for tech support. And you'll probably return the phone and say, this is so stupid. You could do that to me because I get that all the time. For the kind of population I, I serve, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to be quite frustrated with this. Uh, it's just not meant for that kind of population. So this is currently not an end user phone. It's, this is for enthusiasts who really want to, you know, do Linux. And you're going to use this phone in a very minimal way, maybe some browsing, uh, calling and texting. And uh, you have to keep charging at all times. So maybe you have a car and you keep it plugged in constantly. And that way, that's the only way you can survive with this. Now, one of the main elements of this that is kind of unique are these three switches on the side here, which allow you to turn off the baseband modem, the, uh, um, the Wi-Fi, and is it the microphone? I gotta read the manual to see, because I forgot already. You know, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while since I looked at this. And so I read, uh, yeah, uh, camera, microphone, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and modem. Yeah, so. So camera, and then Wi-Fi, and then modem. So this is very important if you're concerned about uh, geofencing. So if you're, you know, going to be in minimalist mode, <clears throat> and you don't want to be geofenced, because <clears throat> Google will geofence you, which I will explain in in the com upcoming video. Um, you cannot be geofenced with this. Uh, well, you can't be geofenced with this either, the, the Brax phone, but these two are good. I mean, they, you can't be geofenced. You can't really do much with this, though, because it's just not not a lot of stuff you can do here. There are some apps here, but just not not a lot, and it's it's quite slow. So, I mean, this, the, the difference in speed between the Android uh, and this is pretty big. It's pretty big. I mean, this, this is, uh, you know... This is, I don't think you'd notice a difference between this and any modern, you know, iPhone. I, I mean, iPhones are faster, but in terms of actual use, you're not going to notice it. Uh, this one is slow enough that you, you'd actually get frustrated. Plus the fact that you can't do the normal things that you expect to do, which is primarily use the camera. So, yeah, so phone calling, texting, I, I haven't tested. And one of the things I was looking at, what is the IMEI for this? Because as you all know, here in the U.S., uh, most phones are banned because of IMEIs. Now, I don't know what solution they came up with here. I have not yet put in a SIM card. Uh, but in, in the U.S., if you have the one of the uh, unknown IMEIs, they will block the phone. <coughs> they blocked the phone. That's in the U.S. Now, what's the solution? The solution is we uh, flash a completely different IMEI on, on the Brax 2. So Brax 2 has um, whatever IMEI we choose, uh, like a Pixel 4a or Pixel 4, whatever I happen to put on here. So, so um, this appears to the carrier as a Pixel 4 or Pixel 4a and runs great. No problem. If I left it with the original IMEI, hell no, it's blocked. So every single Brax 2 phone now is flashed, every USA version. And we flashed uh, some of the original uh, internationals too that were sold in the US. Uh, so I don't know how to do that on this because obviously you have to change the IMEI. You can't just, uh, I mean, as a phone maker, I know that's a significant problem. I don't know where the IMEI is. It there's no inter maybe because I haven't yet plugged in a uh, a SIM card, but it does not show the IMEI anywhere because uh, typically you you need uh, IMEI before you even put in a SIM card. Many times they ask you the IMEI before you put in a SIM card. Now let me look and see if there's an IMEI in the box, and I don't see. Yeah, no reference to an IMA in the box. So that's something that I got to like research to see what carriers actually could work with this. So 
Yeah, because long ago when, when this was first uh, tried and even on the Pine phone, uh, they were still supporting 3G back then. So you, you could actually run these. But th now you can't do that. <clears throat> So I, I actually even wonder if this can even work with any carrier without changing the IMAI. And certainly, I don't know how to do that. So, which we can on the on the Brax 2 phones. You see, it's very difficult to make phones. You, you, you can't really go around making statements to, uh, you know, criticize the makers of phones because it's very, very hard. Uh, the system is just stacked against you. Now, let me just say to you that... <clears throat> That this is why the Google phone using Android is so much easier because it, there is already a running open source which is the basis for every other phone out there to running Android. So the basic operation of the phone is already settled to work and it's optimized for an Android running, uh, you know, uh, an ARM processor. So Android is already optimized <clears throat> very well to run on a phone it has all the security features built into android uh and uh android uh, was built you know as a mobile uh device with mobile security and uh power saving and uh you know everything to do with mobile mobile encryption uh all of that is built into an android uh linux this is based on a standard linux this one is based on pure os Pure OS uh, is, is a fork of Debian, if I recall. And, uh, yeah, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not really made for mobile, so there's some limitations here. Uh, uh, so what they've done, and this is what Purism did, was they say, oh, uh, we're going to make an interface so that the... Uh, the uh, uh, the GNOME uh, interface here will sense the size of the screen and start manipulating the, the screen to, to be uh, a more limited width. And then the apps are built to be uh, responsive <clears throat> to the smaller screen size. That is built into an Android. You don't have to think about that on an Android. It's just naturally built in. But a Linux phone is made to run Linux. I mean, it can run desktop apps on here in theory extremely slowly, but it will run. And um, and so there is not really a distinction between mobile and non-mobile. And, uh, and that poses a lot of limitations in the design of this and the same with the uh, apps that run on... on um, the Pine phone, which is very similar. So, <clears throat> the in fact, the difference is that on the Librem 5, Purism ha have dedicated programmers that, you know, at least work on this, whereas, uh, you know, for uh, the Pine phone, they rely on the OS makers like Ubuntu Touch and, and uh, uh, you know, all the different makers of the different distros uh, for, for Ubuntu. For, I mean, for uh, the Pine Phone, many you know many uh, many distros do work on the Pine Phone, but you know the, the important parts are the elements that have to be done uh, upstream. They have to be done by by uh, by uh, Linus Li Linus Linus. <laughs> you know, at uh, at the Linux uh, Foundation, so the head guy has to approved drivers and so on that will be compatible with this and, and uh, slow for you know you, you'll find most of these have Bluetooth incompatibilities and power saving is, is the next big one um, power saving is the biggest biggest one and you know you actually wonder you know what they did to an Android uh, hardware wise why this is so efficient and it's really as efficient for example uh, this Brax 2 phone lasts two days a charge last two days, eight hours. I mean, that's that's a big difference. Uh, I believe the battery here is pretty big too, and that's why it gets hot. So um, yeah. So uh, look at this. I just charged it twenty six percent, and it says I have one hour and eight minutes remaining. That means if I fully charge this, uh, I will get. Four hours. <laughs> okay. 
I mean, that's what it says. I mean, maybe has to learn, but yeah, four hours. So anyway, we, we uh, uh, um, if if you want to be an enthusiast of you know want to play with this, uh, the uh, the one from uh, Pine Foam is a lot cheaper. I think the newer Pine Foam Pro is only three ninety nine. So yeah, so the problem is that because they were so bad at delivering this, the reputation of purism has kind of soured. And I have to admit that they're right. I mean, if if you're a buyer of this phone, the lack of communications and the fact that it took this many years, and I I, I think to be honest with you, I think the reason that they were unable to sh to not ship the phone uh, is not necessarily because of COVID, that was part of it, to a point. If I were to make a guess, and this is only a guess, I think they ran out of cash. They spent the money that they got. They spent it, they didn't have any money. They started raising funds. So, you know, if you bought a Pine phone, they start giving you emails saying, please invest in our company, please invest in our company. And it's, it's, it's become kind of a pyramid scheme. And so I don't really, I can't really say I trust them. So I trust the Pine Phone people. They're very legit. Same kind of thing. Same kind of phone. Um, yeah. And uh, the Pine Phone people are very, uh, very open. In fact, they open source the circuit board. So <clears throat> they actually publish. Like they, they release a new uh, motherboard with, uh, with some uh, power saving features. And they actually not only publish the changes to the motherboard, uh, they actually allowed you to update your own motherboard. So I actually bought an update to the motherboard for for my my Pine Fund. Uh, but until they solve the until they solve the power saving issue, it's really hard to dedicate some time to this. I dedicated a lot of time to to the Pine Fund and Purism in early days, and I, I'm I've, I've been disappointed here. So th the fact of the matter is, for the kind of market that I sell to. Uh, you're not going to be happy with a product that is nowhere near the functionality of a normal phone. Uh, you know, I sell obviously these phones and I sell other models like Pixels. Pixels are very advanced phones. They're, they're kind of like iPhones. I don't have any Pixel nearby here. But uh, Pixels are very advanced phones and I mean they're e much faster than even a Brax 2. So if you're, uh, if you're saying, well, you know, you're you're just trying to promote your own phone. And I'll tell you, the Pixels are faster. They're significantly faster. Of course, they're more expensive. But they're sig significantly faster. So we, we actually have a pretty uh, low-cost option and with, uh, with uh, the Brax 2 phone. And it's quite, you know, quite functional. Uh, most of you don't even, you know, notice uh, what the difference is between, let's say, a Brax 2 phone and let's say a Pixel de Google running, let's say Calyx, <clears throat> you're not even going to notice. So it's that good because you know uh, it's been refined. So anyway, I'll I'll uh, um, um, so yeah. Just to close it off here, my point is, uh, would I recommend this to to you if you're a uh, you know a person who wants to learn to test things and run Linux on mobile and if this really interests you if I were going to make a suggestion buy these used there's going to be lots of people trying to sell these I paid seven hundred some dollars for this eight hundred dollars okay they're going to want to dump it somebody already dumped one for me so uh, yeah they're going to want to dump this so you can buy them cheap I'm sure go to eBay and Look around in the near future and you should be able to find them. Would you buy a new one? Hell no. Uh, it's not justified. Would you buy a newer Pine Phone Pro if you want to experiment? Yes. Actually, you, you, can, make a, you can make a Brax router. From, you can run you know, Linux apps on a Pine Phone Pro. I mean, uh, plugged in, of course, because they have the power saving problem. But, but it's... it's uh, Kind of a powerful Raspberry Pi with everything on it, including storage, which a Raspberry Pi does not have. So, <coughs> so yeah. Do I recommend it? No. 
for average users, no. For people who like to experiment, sure, why not? Okay? Uh, should you invest in purism? No. I, I don't think... Uh, yeah, I, they, they have not proven to be... They have not proven to be trustworthy. So I'll be honest with you, I, I would be shamed if I started supporting purism here and, you know, they disappoint you and then you'll blame me. So I can't, I can't in all honesty uh, support them because they'll likely disappoint you. Anyway, we'll continue. I want to talk about some details on Brax 2 in a moment here. Uh, but let's start off first with uh, our sponsor, Sponsor Break. So the first hour, half hour is done. If you uh, want to stop watching the live stream, you, you can uh, move on and we'll catch you next time and watch the regular short video on uh, on Wednesdays. <coughs> and my sponsor is Linode. Now, I run a lot of servers on Linode and you know, I'm not dumb. Why would I run servers on Linode? Uh, the reason is because they really are the best option for me. Why did I accept Linode as a sponsor? For the same reason, because they have been such a good and supportive company. And I, I to be honest today, I, I likely will not ever change. That. I haven't found a reason to change from Linode. I like to, to uh, dump every other ISP I have if I can. I can't dump all of them, but, uh, but uh, uh, the majority of my servers are only know because they have the best prices and the best tech support. So Linode has been purchased by Akamai, so now they're part of the uh, Akamai cloud services, so they're now part of a very big company, which will result in expansion. I believe they expect to be opening up new data centers uh, all around the world and in the U.S., later this year and early next year. So I'm very excited about that because I want to add more servers on Linode. It's a good company. If you go to uh, their website, linode.com, and do slash Rob Braxman, if you're considering a Linux server, a website uh, running WordPress or, or any other kind of Linux server and you want to run it uh, on an ISP, put slash Rob Braxman, it'll give you a $100 credit that you get uh, to use within two months. And likely you'd not use that in two months because they're so cheap. Okay, so... <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> again, to, to summarize, I'd like to be supportive of companies, legit companies that make products like this. Uh, I'd like to, if they're legit. I, I haven't really gotten the good feelings about them being legit, but I do have good feelings about the, uh, how legit uh, the uh, Pine64 is. Pine64.org, uh, yeah, they're, they're not just nice people, but they really do believe in what they do, and, they <coughs> and they're not even trying to make money. Um, which is amazing, you know. Uh, the The founder is a a, a Chinese American man uh, in in San Francisco or San Jose. I'm not sure where he is uh, exactly, but uh, uh, he uses he leverages on the uh, uh, infrastructure of of Shenzhen and making phones over there. <clears throat> but uh, I believe he's from Taiwan, if I recall. And, you know, he, he does manufacture the phones in, in China because all phones are manufactured in China right now. And, but he's, they're very, very good company. Um, and, uh, you know, you see them in all the open source areas. And everything they do is open source. They open source the hardware. Now, you know, how, how, who has seen that? Open source hardware. Open source circuitry, circuit boards, open source. That's pretty awesome. So... So yeah, so that's a very legit company, and the they the price it's a fraction. They they they're making these phones uh, for hardly any money, uh, three ninety nine for the new Pine Phone Pro. I believe the original one Pine Phone was two two ninety nine. Can't remember exactly, but it was maybe even less than that, two eighty nine. It 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 wasn't it was under three hundred. So yeah, so 
that's uh, pretty fair for a project phone. You don't feel bad doing a project phone for, you know, under 300 bucks. Uh, you do feel bad spending 800 bucks and really getting nothing usable. So, <clears throat> yeah. And I'm guessing the PinePhone Pro is going to be faster than the original PinePhone. Because speed is also an issue. And, and yeah. So, the original one was 200? Wow. <clears throat> it's even... That's even shocking. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. So uh, yeah, it may have been two hundred, and that's uh, amazing. So that totally like no profit. Just uh, let's just get it out there. Yeah. So so anyway, <clears throat> um, let me talk to you about uh, the Brax Two Phone because Brax Brax Two Phone is one of the things I do sell, and. Uh, if you're asking me as far as benefits, what is the benefit of a Librem 5 phone, a Pine phone, a Brax 2 phone, a de-googled Pixel running Calyx or Lineage OS uh, or Motorola running, running Lineage OS? What's, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, uh, what's, what's the comparison here in terms of value for your privacy and i'm going to tell you if they work if they work they're all good solutions so i'm not going to tell you uh you know buy this buy that judge for yourself and even if i don't offer it yeah I, i'm not going to tell you uh that you shouldn't be getting it. i'm just saying that there are some limitations currently uh, primarily on the power saving side and obviously the the uh Linux ones do not have an app store per se that can run, you know, your standard apps that you're familiar with. It doesn't have that. So on a normal, uh, on a normal uh, um, Linux phone, you are expected to pretty much rely on the browser. And the browser is not very fast on these because they have a slow graphics processor and a slow CPU uh, versus the speed of the processor and the CPUs and the graphics processor on these are optimized for Android so they're much faster <coughs> and that's some of the limitations of uh, of um, of Linux so given that uh, I, I'm just trying to tell you that yeah I mean if for privacy it doesn't matter which one you buy uh, as long as you're able to use it so I'm just telling you that you you may not you may not be able to use that you know a Pine phone and a uh, and a uh, Librem five uh, if they don't solve the power problem. So yeah, you, you can play with it for the right price. It doesn't it you shouldn't mind playing with it. So you can make it like a project computer, like a Raspberry Pi, and and, and it'll be useful for that purpose uh, if the price is okay. Uh, for eight hundred bucks, a little bit. That's a bit steep. A bit steep. So, for three ninety nine for a Pine Phone Pro, yeah, the original one is two hundred. Like some of you remembered, I forgot. Um, yeah, but uh, Pine Phone Pro uh, is obviously a much more advanced phone than the original, so uh, it should be much faster than a Librem Five. The Librem Five. Is almost a matching spec with the Pine Phone, the original Pine Phone. <coughs> so they're they're very very similar in uh, in power. Now, <clears throat> um, let me talk to you about the Brax Two Phone. <coughs> the Brax Two Phone um, was first sold uh, April last year. So we're at uh, that was a year ago, and um, yeah, I, I'm uh, definitely going to be out of Brax 2 phones uh, around June. I, I hardly have any internationals left. I, I don't know how many I have, maybe a handful. I don't sell that many internationals, but I'm, I may only have a handful left and then that's it. Um, <clears throat> does that mean I can't sell any phones? <coughs> Sorry. Um, uh, no, because I sell pixels. So what I'm going to do is, um, is 
stock up on a, a particular model of the Pixel in the next uh, month or so. And the model I'm going to uh, heavily stock on would be a Pixel 6a. So, and I'm hoping to sell that at approximately the same price as a Brax 2 phone. Currently, the Brax 2 phone is 420. So, I'm hoping to uh, to sell a uh, Google Pixel 6a degoogled with, uh, you know, uh, probably Calyx on it, Calyx OS, uh, around <clears throat> around that same price. So the problem is getting these phones. Uh, it's very hard to get phones. So somebody said, you're, you're charging too much for your phones. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, go buy them. I mean, some of you are like, uh, you know, have have imagined uh, experience in in running a business, and uh, you know the the number one problem is getting stock, and and <clears throat> I'm very selective of the stock. I only get mint, so I can't just go to eBay and say I'm gonna just get the you know I can't do that because they have to be OEM OEM unlockable, uh, and you have a fifty fifty chance of that. And second, they have to be of a quality that would I would classify as mint, which means I gotta have a wholesaler screen those for me <coughs> so yeah it's it's uh which adds to the cost because i gotta have a middleman that checks these for me to make sure that i can sell them and and then i have to warrant them so i mean if you uh, it's that's why i don't charge too much if you take the risk get your own phone you take the risk of its oem unlocked you take the risk of any defect you take the risk of everything and uh, i just charge you for the installation of the os uh you know, kind of like an hourly rate. And you could do that too, but it's, you know, it's obviously risky. And in, in the end, you'll probably find it's not worth it. So, because, <clears throat> you know, I do warrant the phones and uh, uh, you, they're used phones and I, I do warrant them. I obviously warrant the, uh, the Brax 2 phones. So having said that, we're going to be running out of Brax 2 phones. I'm going to guess sometime around June. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, Brax 2 USAs so will probably run out in, in June. I have only enough stock for, for <coughs> that period. So I'm going to try to, to uh, make sure that I have you know, other models like uh, Pixel 6a, Pixel 6. Um, I, I'm having regular stock now Pixel 6, but Pixel 6s are still expensive phones. So... And they're in the store, but they're more expensive. Pixel 5 is uh, cheaper. Pixel 5 is a 5G phone. It's a little cheaper now because it's a year older than a Pixel 6a. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, <clears throat> so that's what I expect to do. Now, uh, obviously, I'm saying this to you uh, because I do have a new phone model coming out in the fall so in the fall so i maybe maybe uh you know august september i don't know yet um depends on you know depends on uh, the supply chain but uh, so sometime then we uh we may have a new model uh that we can sell again i don't know what the prices will be uh hoping it's around the same price as the current one and the new model uh, has the uh, look of an iPhone. It it does look like an iPhone. <clears throat> it has you know the square the square edges and all, all around. The back finish is. Uh, we're still trying to decide if we're going to go with glass or plastic on the back. <clears throat> uh, I tend to prefer glass, so that it doesn't get scratched, and then you put a case over it uh has we haven't decided that uh obviously you're not going to use an iphone even without a case you, you know you don't want to you don't want to break it uh don't know what the model name is yet we haven't we haven't gotten to that <clears throat> those are all you know the model is not on the uh it's not on the main component so it, it's software so that that can be decided at the last minute so yeah so that um so so maybe we can um, <clears throat> uh, put it on uh, 
pre-sale, uh, you know, uh, what it, pre-orders sometime, uh, sometime in uh, August. I, I don't know yet. So I don't want to, I don't want to like <clears throat> state things that I don't know uh, in, with certainty. So <coughs> what I do know is that it looks, looks pretty nice. It looks very nice, so it it it's a uh, uh, this this aesthetics of the phone are are improvement. I found that this uh, the current one has a very shiny uh, back, and that's prone to scratches. I don't like that, so that's my main complaint with the current form uh, is that you know it tends to be prone to scratches because of that shiny shiny finish. Uh, even the pick, the purism one doesn't is not is not uh, likely to get scratches because of the way the the finishes in the back. So just giving you an idea of what is looking at for the future here. Uh, as usual, I'd probably suggest that if you're thinking about using Verizon here in the U.S., that you go with a Pixel. <clears throat> so don't wait. Don't wait for a Brax Brax phone of any sort including the current ones if you're going to be on Verizon we historically we've had problems with Verizon since the very beginning and uh, we thought we solved it by adding band 4 uh, on on uh, on the you know on the phone we added band 4 because that's a Verizon frequency and hopefully we solve the issue yeah the phone runs texting does not so it's it, it just they're just not easy to deal with and because of that, I'm just going to say, if you want to use Verizon because your area is rural and you don't have a lot of uh, uh, other carriers that you can use, then you should stick with a Pixel phone. So I've only been stocking Pixels. I stopped uh, stocking Motorola's. I've been so disappointed with Motorola in the past. As you guys know, many of you bought Motorola G7s and G7 Plus, and then they sucking stop supporting those. I mean, such a, you know, awful decision. Uh, you know, Motorola is owned by Lenovo. And they just stopped supporting them. And uh, they claim, and this is, you know, who knows really what the truth is. Because, they you know, I can't really trust anything the carriers say. They say the reason that the Motorola's were uh, not supported was because they did not adhere to the uh, standard, the correct standard for VoLTE, for voice over LTE, that they had a flawed implementation of VoLTE. That's what they say. I have no idea if that's true or not, but that's what they claim. And for that reason, they blacklisted, like AT&T was the one of the first ones to blacklist the Moto G7 and the Moto G7 Plus. The only carrier that even allows you to run them uh, sometimes is uh, T-Mobile and only if you're grandfathered. If you bring a new one, they probably won't allow you to bring it in. They're the only carrier, not even MVNOs will allow you to put in a Moto G7. So for that reason, I just don't want that problem anymore. I mean, <clears throat> uh, I, I try to do my best to protect you, uh, the users, but, you know, I, I'm just like you, I'm... I'm selling stuff that we can use to protect our privacy and uh, it's something that i want you to think about because you don't appreciate you know the value of having these kinds of phones and even even this even this is you know as much as i am critical of the functionality of this because the it says the power is going to run only for four hours <clears throat> the reality is that one of the th and I'm going to make a video about this, and I'm I'm going to tell you right now that you know you you need to understand this, uh, but I'll explain it more in the video. Uh, is the idea of geofencing? It's a future video, uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, in June. <clears throat> geofencing. Now, what exactly is geofencing? As you know, uh, your 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 law enforcement agencies. Uh, can go to your uh, to Google and say, "Tell me who was found in this area." And they did it to, as many of you know, 
they did it to the protesters at uh, the Capitol on January 6th, the January 6th uh, Capitol riot, right? So they used it on those people there. And, of course, you know, most, most of them are uh, using normie phones. Well, they arrested 948 of them as of March. 948 people were arrested from a geofenced uh, uh, data, which the courts ruled to be uh, valid. And so now they're geofenced, and they uh, they they've been arrested and subject to you know whatever penalties for a misdemeanor or whatever they did, right? Uh, <coughs> now. Um, what's interesting is if you were there with a Braxton phone, this is really funny. I mean, think about it. You don't even have to think about anything. If you had a Braxton phone walking around the Capitol on January 6th, you are not going to show up on Google's database. I mean, doesn't that shock you? And you say, does not turn on any lights? I mean, I haven't said this directly to you, but here's, I'm saying it to you now. Listen to me. Listen to me now. As Schwarzenegger would say, listen to me now. Okay. No, there is, there is an escape for, for geofencing. For one thing, uh, in case you didn't know, uh, <clears throat> not only did this phone not report anything to Google, it doesn't have any login, there's no Google ID. Wi-Fi triangulation, which also sends to Google, does not exist. There is no Wi-Fi triangulation on this. It, it actually doesn't even work indoors. If you run Waze, on, the GPS only works outdoors, not indoors. So without doing anything, you're walking around. They can't even geofence you. My gosh, I mean, that alone is like, no, there are still some ways to track you, uh, which we've tried to solve on this phone, but uh, uh, like Supple, Supple also goes to Google. But there's no identity on the phone. The phone doesn't, if you're running on cell data, they don't know who the phone is. So, yeah, this, you know, this, this is pretty awesome information. And it's very significant. <clears throat> and people are like, you know, ignoring that, and they're they want to they, they don't understand the privacy uh, benefits of having a the Google phone. If if you don't uh, understand that, you need to get one of these seriously. I mean, think about it. You don't have to do anything special. Some of you say, "Oh, I I got a uh, uh, I got I got a." Uh, uh, I'm going to get a Brax tube phone. How do I use this? What do I need to do? What are all the special procedures? And on and on and on. You're like thinking you got to do something special. And you realize, no, you don't have to do anything special because you already are doing it with the fact that you turn on the phone and you've never logged into Google. Now, if you want to be fully safe, this phone can be traced by Stingray. So it's not perfect. It can be traced by Stingray. So Stingray uh, uses the IMSI, IMSI catcher. So if you're going to go somewhere, you, you go into network and you basically disable the SIM card. You don't even have to take it off. Just go into network settings here and there's an option to disable the SIM card <clears throat> without taking it off. When you disable the SIM card, then the... Uh, the um, um, Stingray doesn't work. Now, Stingray has nothing to do with Google. So Stingray geolocation is requires somebody to run a Stingray in the location. So somebody had to have run Stingray, uh, which they probably do have that at the Capitol. So that's a separate step. They don't need to go to Google for that. They just need to, to get your MZ, and then from your MZ, they need to go to the carrier and say, who owns this MZ? They can do that. And there you go. They got it. Okay. That's not Google. 
I'm telling you that on the Google front, this cannot be geofenced by Google without taking any other action. No geofencing by Google. Because there's no ID, there's nothing. There's nothing that identifies you in any way. Okay? So there you go. So there's no geofencing by, by Google, but it can be it can be stingrayed me using an IMSI catcher. So to catch the cell signal. How do you disable that? You go to a Braxty phone, you disable the SIM card temporarily, and you're good to go. You're good to go. You can even use Wi-Fi. Find some Wi-Fi around you and, right, <coughs> and you'll be fine. I mean, just just, just the fact that you can't be geofenced by, uh, by Google, it show up in the, uh, so anytime you go anywhere with a normie phone, all of your data about location goes to something called the Google Sensor Vault. I don't know if you know about that. The kind of stuff I got to teach you here goes to the Sensor Vault. So everything that is found about your, your sensor information on your phone from Wi-Fi triangulation, you know, all, all of that, uh, Wi-Fi scanning, uh, uh, I don't know if Supple goes in that database or not. Let's just assume it is. So all of this information will lead to location and timestamps, and that will find you uh, and record it. And that includes even cell tower data, because that's part of Wi-Fi triangulation. That's part of the service called NLP, uh, Network Location Provider. I talked about that in a major video last year. So... <clears throat> Yeah, so you uh, again, it doesn't have to be a Brax tube phone. It can be this. They all work. If the battery lasts in this, it'll be fine too. I mean, it's slow, but, you know, it's safe. Now, on the Librem 5, there's a switch for the modem. So if you switch it off, you don't have to take off the SIM card because it just turns off the modem. Okay, so so that works too. The same, the uh, Pine phone has the same kind of switch. You can turn off the modem with a switch. So that's the advantage of those phones. If they just solved the power saving problem, uh, they would actually be usable. I, you know, even if the camera doesn't work, well, it's a big deal. But yeah, it's a big deal not to have a camera nowadays. I mean, it's it's kind of a basic thing, you know. Uh, when I was first uh, uh, trying to get you guys to, to go at the Google route, one of the first devices I was trying to tell you to use was the Nexus 5 running, which is a 3G phone, running Ubuntu Touch. And I, you know, I uh, bought many Nexus 5s and I sold it to many of you. <coughs> of course, that doesn't work anymore because it's 3G. And uh, the problem with Ubuntu Touch is they never really, you know, went on to develop other phones that we can use and so they're kind of stuck in uh, with no proper androids to use a nexus 5 was very usable it had bluetooth uh it um you know battery power was fine because it's an android so androids have have uh, good ba battery power and it was functional it had camera and all that so it it was functional i don't understand why well i do understand why but they need to solve these problems, and uh, I don't know if they have the resources to solve it. So, yeah. So anyway, that's uh, that's uh, that's the story there. I, I'm I'm just trying to tell you that uh, I am not necessarily pushing you to any particular kind of phone. Uh, people are saying, "Oh, you're just trying to sell your phone." I, I don't really care, you know. Obviously, I need to support this channel, but enough of you will buy the phones that I sell because you need one. But I'm not telling you to buy mine. Uh, just like I don't, you know, and some of you use different VPNs. You're not using my VPN. If you support this channel, you can use our VPN because uh, I think it's better. But uh, you know, if you don't, then it's fine. You, as long as you have a VPN, you know, I'm supportive of that. Uh, you know, this this channel is not about, you know, just pushing something that, you know, uh, benefits me financially. It's more important that I benefit you. So, yeah, so that that's uh, 
just I, that's a false accusation that just just bugs me. You know, it's, if you want to run a business, we have limitations here. If I have to buy a product, uh, we have to price it based on uh, on uh, some reasonable way of doing it that I can pay salaries of my staff. Uh, you know, somebody has to make these. <coughs> it's not me. I, I'm not sitting around making these phones. I have staff doing it, and obviously I got to pay them. Okay, so you know it's it's uh, you got to run a business. You got to run it the right way, or then you fail. So as many of you know, I I many of you have come to me uh, even beyond warranty periods, and we've we've worked around. We we have done workarounds to uh, to satisfy you, even you know if it's beyond beyond uh, a warranty period. Because I'm here to help you, you know. So we're, there's there's a there, there's a limit. My goal is to educate you to to raise the numbers of people who are aware of the issues and have a. Uh, it would be nice if ten percent of the population uh, believed in what we believe. I, I I don't know what the percentage is right now. It's a fraction of one percent. Look at my look at my uh, subscriber count and my view count. It's very low. So yeah, I mean, uh, even if you got to a million million subscribers, I'm not sure you made much of a dent. Well, a million in the U.S. that would be good. Uh, you know, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not even there. So and uh, and my numbers get stuck depending on the video. So if you know, if you guys are bored with the videos, then you don't. The Google doesn't recommend them and if google doesn't recommend them no new viewers see the videos like for example the last month uh google decided that my videos are not exciting enough for you you guys are watching them like normal but google saying that you're not getting excited because you're not clicking on it you're not commenting you're not hitting like you're not doing something uh the click rate is is not as robust therefore they don't feed it to anybody else and when that happens I don't get new subscribers. So for the last month, my subscriber increase has been close to zero. Pretty close to zero. And that's, you know, that's the way it is. Up and down, up and down. So, yeah, so I, I, I don't I don't worry about that. So my my uh, my my goal is to, to do what I do and educate you and uh, come up with the best content I can. Uh, you know, some of the videos that I feel are very good quality and some of you say so uh, maybe I didn't do a right thumbnail maybe but the title wasn't that interesting you know it's I, I'm gonna blame myself so yeah so like the the video on uh, dystopia on the browser URL I mean that's a very important video there's a lot of detail in there that some of you say well I already know how how all that works uh, do you really know how all that works? Those who actually watch it will say, were saying, wow, that's, that's good stuff. Because they didn't know the kind of detail that they're, they're going to see. And that's what's unique about this channel is the detail. <clears throat> many, many uh, other, uh, you know, creators in this space don't give you any detail. They'll make some statements they can't back up. And they don't give any detail. And then some will say, "Oh, uh, this Rob guy, he he doesn't do any lab testing or whatever he says." Well, of course not. That's not my job. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not here to do lab testing. I'm here to analyze the technology and then tell you what are the risk of somebody using that in a bad way. Which means I got to predict. I'm not gonna try to. Uh, find out a cybersecurity threat at the back end that's too late i have to predict i have to tell you what they're going to do before it gets going in a big way for example i've been talking to you about client-side scanning a very very important thing client-side scanning now they're passing new laws uh to uh uh, codify that like you know uh, the CSAM stuff <coughs> they're actually 
uh, bring that back in the Senate again. So th they want uh, they want more CSAM uh, laws, and the CSAM is just a cover. I've told you this many many times. CSAM is a cover to break encryption. They they find your hot button because you, you you're all you're all so naive. You say, oh yeah, let's oh my gosh, yes, CSAM, let's get rid of all that. That's really bad. And then they say, well, how do you get rid of CSAM? By getting rid of encryption. Oh, oh, but it's for a good cause. Stupid zucks. It's not for the good cause because once they break encryption, it's irreversible. Okay, it's irreversible. I don't do shorts, cosmic rose, waste of time. This is not just not my format. You can get like a million views on a short and not get any new, new subscribers uh, and not get any uh, anything uh, to get them to subscribe to you. Well, you know, that doesn't that doesn't work here because the kind of stuff that I do, which is very unique to this channel, is that I have to give you a lot of detail. <clears throat> a lot of detail here. So what what I um, I explained to you is unique in this channel because I want to support it with a lot of factual information uh on, and analysis. Uh cuz sometimes I have to theorize cuz it hasn't happened yet, uh, or we don't know the details yet. So I have to theorize it, and that means giving you a lot of detail on the theories behind why I think something's going to happen. Which, as as many of you know who've been watching me for, you know, since uh, how long? How long have I been doing this? I, I forget. Has it has it been nine years? Uh, or eight years, I, I don't remember now, but <clears throat> uh, let's say eight years or nine years of doing doing this, doing uh, uh, social media. Uh, in, in all that time, uh, I, I make statements about what I predict will happen, and uh, you know my, my, uh, my record has been pretty good. People who question me uh, at the time when I make the statement, uh, you know, realize that now today that what I was saying is actually going to happen. So yeah, I've been I've been proven correct in too many instances. So because <clears throat> uh, it what what is it? It's like human nature. What, given the technology, will somebody use it badly? And the answers are yes. If the technology exists, they will use it badly um, <clears throat> no cosmic rose those shorts are not going to help my channel at all no i mean that's fine in theory but you will find you will find that that doesn't work for my kind of content so yeah uh you can't generalize you know that shorts like if i went on tiktok <laughs> Are you saying that I'm going to be able to explain these concepts on TikTok? No, I'm going to have to say on TikTok, get it, the Google phone. No, 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 done. And people are going to say, oh, yeah, what, what does that mean? Okay, so I do uh, some short saying something funny about the Google phones. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the concepts I'm explaining are way too complicated. And uh, yeah, so how to how do you put LokiNet on your? They don't have support for mobile yet on LokiNet, so that's not yet uh, quite ready. So the way you'd put LokiNet on my phone is to use a uh, Brack router NUC software, and uh, the router then does LokiNet for you. So yeah, uh, short attention span that doesn't work for my kind of content. I've studied this. I mean, I certainly would consider it if, if it if it works for me. But I've been watching all these, you know, comments of whether shorts will work for me or not. It works for certain markets, like if you're entertaining. So if you're doing some entertainment, I've watched even like uh, 
uh, David Bumble, who's a tech uh, tech uh, channel with a million million plus uh, subscribers, and he started to do shorts. I wonder how that's working for him. So does he get uh, does he get uh, uh, more subscription from it? He gets the views, but yeah, the 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 style of shorts is you. You watch it and then you move on, and you don't take any action. You you get a um, uh, entertainment for your nine seconds, and then you move on. So, yeah, <clears throat> a goldfish actually has nine second attention span. That's a that's a lot for a goldfish. <coughs> Yeah. So anyway, the uh, um, yeah, I I I uh, I'm not interested really in doing short. So it's time consuming to do these, and then if you're not going to get the benefits you want, um, anyway, <clears throat> I'll think about it. But okay, uh, do a video with the men in black are chasing you down, but they. Can, can't find you because of the De Gaulle phone. Um, wow, that's a serious production there. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm equipped for that. <laughs> that's a, you know, I don't have the skills for c cinematography, like making, uh, making movies. <laughs> uh, I, I do a very bad job even on my sailing channel because, you know, I'm just talking while I'm doing the sailing. So, yeah, I, I uh, you know, I'm, I'm a talking head talking head kind of uh, uh, creator here. So, yeah. <clears throat> Is there a book that describes your line of research? Unfortunately, you know, if you use a book, the information will be out of date pretty much immediately. Uh, for example, uh, there are some interesting books on, on cybersecurity, like from Kevin Mitnick. Kevin Mitnick lives here in L.A. somewhere, in the Valley, I believe. And Kevin Mitnick is the most well-known hacker of all time. I mean, he was hacking in the 90s when people didn't even know what hacking was about. He was hacking the phone company primarily. And, uh, and they arrested him finally and charged him with enough stuff. Uh, like every, for every uh, MZ and IMEI that he stole, uh, for every MZ that he stole, uh, it, he gets a few years, so they charge him for 50 years. 50 years. Okay. They put him in jail. He was out in five. After five years, he became a consultant. Uh, so now he makes money as a, a consultant. He wrote many books. Uh, it's interesting what he wrote in his books. Uh, you can read them, and they're very, very interesting books. They're kind of out of date, though. They don't really relate to new technology. So... I mean, they're 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 more interesting with uh, you know the process and how you do uh, um, social engineering. They're very good social engineering books, you know, from Kevin Mitnick. Uh, but they don't really tell you the the real risk today, you know, with Google and <clears throat> geofencing and all. You know, this is stuff that uh, I come up with. And a video I make today will, you know, will may have incorrect information in a year. So we'll just have to do it by videos here because I don't, I don't, I tried to, I have a, I have a website, whatthezuck.net, and I haven't really been able to update it because the information just changes so fast. So for, for this kind of work, we're, we're fighting Google, Apple, you know, the entities that have a lot of money. They're the biggest corporations in the world. Uh, they change very fast. So what I say will, you know, be out of date and people will will uh, uh, criticize what I say as being incorrect after a very short while. So I wish I can write a book uh, that can, you know, stay relevant uh, for more than a year. But right now it's just like a year. So that's why you have to do live streams. <clears throat> well, I could always self-publish. So 
Phone phishing is long gone. Yeah, but you you learn about uh, social engineering. Uh, you know, Kevin Mitnick's approach with social engineering is still is still valid today. He uh, he takes the persona of just to tell you some of the stuff that he does. It's you know very very useful. Uh, you tell the person what they expect to hear. So if you're trying to convince somebody by fishing that you're a legit kind of person drop a name for example uh go you know dox the uh dox the department and find who the department head is and drop that name and say to the employee oh yeah i talked to i just had a conversation with with uh with john who's your uh director of operations and you know he said that, you know, and then you, you get into that and you, uh, Kevin Mitnick was, was good at stealing manuals from uh, AT&T and so on. So he stole the manuals and he, uh, he, uh, he can actually uh, recite like uh, elements in the manual that make him sound like he's like a, a real phone technician. And that's part of the, what you learn from Kevin Mitnick is, is that's the element of... Uh, <clears throat> the behavior that allows you to to do social engineering now one of the things that uh, are interesting from uh, how much time i have yeah 15 14 minutes one of the interesting things about uh, about uh social engineering uh, which you can apply to doxing uh i happen to be a you know a very advanced doxing expert. I, I'm. Uh, um, if I try to find somebody, uh, I have been successful 100%. Now, sometimes it takes a while. It doesn't. It's not easy to to dox everyone, and this is why I don't like to do it because it's it's very time consuming. But if you want to do to, to to dox uh, uh, someone, like let's say somebody is attacking me, and I want to dox them. Uh, to, to dox is actually understanding human behavior. If you f know what they do on the internet, you will actually know what things that somebody can do. Um, I'm not telling you to dox, by the way, but doxing is not illegal per se, especially if they're attacking me. Um, but... But uh, when when you when you uh, uh, attempt to dox a person, you you actually are trying to find data based on mistakes that everyone will make uh, when they go on the internet. Like, uh, can you really hide your name completely on the internet? And you will find that most people can't lie completely, and so they make a mistake, and then you can make connections, and uh, you can find stuff. <coughs> have you tried EOS? No, I, I have not tried EOS. EOS uh, is fine. If you want to use EOS, you can find it. You can use it. I don't do EOS. So the company is in the EU. But yeah, I don't do that. So EOS has nothing to do with me. But if you want to use EOS, I don't. I, I don't know what... What stands out about EOS is pretty much like EOS is uh, basically just a fork of Lineage OS. It's fine though. It does it does what Lineage OS does, you know, with Aurora Store and all that. The same stuff. So yeah, it's 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 fine. It'll be a good solution. It's it's an acceptable solution for the googling. Anyway, uh, in doxing, you you uh, you predict human behaviors. And this is why I found that I can find anyone on Facebook. I can find any information on Facebook, even if you set up every privacy setting you can imagine. You know, even if you hide your friends, hide everything you want to hide, I'll still find you <coughs> if you have Facebook. Solution, don't be on Facebook. Do you know how difficult it is to find someone when you are not on Facebook? So, yeah, if you're not on Facebook, you will already stand out as being hard to find. 
Very simple thing. Don't be on Facebook, suddenly you're hard to find. Be on Facebook, you're zucked for sure. Okay, so uh, yeah. So if you're going to be on Facebook, there is no hiding. Uh, you will be found. I'll find every relative uh, of yours talking about you, you know, uh, photos that you don't even know about that they have about you. And uh, yeah, and, and you can correlate all that with various ways of searching that you've never even imagined. Northern Chimp, uh, uh, don't know. I don't know what the network issues were. Um, they cleared up after the broadcast, obviously. Don't know. WhatsApp is Facebook. What are you talking about? So don't tell me, is WhatsApp worse than Facebook? WhatsApp is Facebook. Instagram is Facebook. So <clears throat> when I say Facebook, I mean all of that. So, yeah, don't... don't uh, if, if you avoid those uh, anything in the Facebook family, you are automatically safe in a big way. It become you become harder to dock just from those three. Much harder. <clears throat> if you're if you haven't deleted your Facebook account, uh, yeah, then you're still there. All the information there is still about you. Is there? <coughs> how do you get how do you protect yourself from Pegasus 2 dump your iPhone how hard is that dump your fucking iPhone you know Pe uh, uh, I, I have just nine minutes here the uh, the iPhone supposedly is secure from Pegasus when you do the uh, lockdown mode so you go to your iPhone and you set up lockdown mode and uh, yeah, you're supposedly safe from Pegasus in lockdown mode. What exactly is lockdown mode? What exactly is lockdown mode? Do you think this is some super secret thing that where Apple just succeeded in uh, making sure that, uh, that you really get locked down? No, lockdown mode says you can't download anything. No downloading, no opening of any attachments. That's what lockdown mode is. No attachments. Well, guys, I'm in lockdown mode all the time because I don't open attachments. Some of you will send me messages, uh, even encrypted messages on you know, you say, click this and, you, you know, I have a secret to Tanoda message for you or whatever. Uh, come on, guys. I'm not going to go open that. Okay? Not going to open that. Let's not waste time. I'm not going to open it. <clears throat> you want to talk to me? You go to Brax Me. It's simple. I'm not going to go open up some unknown app. Nope, because that's my lockdown mode. I have my own lockdown mode and that's it. Okay, so yeah, so lockdown mode is simply Apple's uh, way of telling you don't download any attachments, which you can do on your own. You don't need any lockdown mode for that. Okay, so um, Verizon just bought Straight Talk. Uh, so Ver uh, Straight Talk is an MVNO. Was that a Verizon MVNO, I presume? Uh, did T-Mobile buy Mint? Which is interesting. Why would they need to buy Mint? <clears throat> because Ryan Reynolds needs money? Go to the wood without your phone. That's a tried and proven method. Uh, go sailing. They can track location and sailing. That's pretty hard to, uh, to see you. <laughs> so, uh, please do sudo apt full upgrade. It's an easy way to update your phone. Please do sudo uh, full. It's an easy way to update your phone on your Librem 5. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, but I just got it. Then they upgraded before they shipped it to me. Okay, I'll do that. 
I haven't yet tried putting a SIM card in, so there's still stuff I gotta go test. <clears throat> but but it's really hard to do that when it only lasts for four hours. Okay, come on. How how do you actually use the phone that only lasts for four hours? <laughs> At least that's what it says. It says you have, I charge it to 26% and it says I only have one hour and eight minutes left. Okay, so that's one hour per quarter charge. Okay, that's, uh, that's, not, that's not good. So I don't want to waste too much time when, when if, if it's not really all that usable. So, uh, yeah. Maybe it'll surprise me. I'll keep uh, an open mind and test it some more later. Okay, uh, curious to hear your thoughts on the recent announcement made at Google I.O. What, which announcements? I got your attachment right here. No signal in some woods. How survive? Uh, uh, if you have Sky, you can use Starlink. <laughs> <coughs> Just get sky. You, you have to get out of the trees, and you can use Starlink. Starlink is uh, is is going to be fine. So I, I have Starlink, and uh, Starlink does have some privacy benefits. So, so I found that because of the way Starlink works, it you know you are just one of the people communicating with the moving satellites. There's a string of satellites coming at you, right? And you're changing satellites every. So often, I don't know how often it is, but every so often you switch satellites. So you transmit and receiving a different satellite depending on uh, where you are. And, uh, um, and it's, uh, it's because you don't have a specific base station per se, it's, you know, you connect to a different satellite each time. Um, the uh, connectivity information is is not is not all uh, uh, clear. For example, no one. How does someone attack you by sending a connection that uh, can attack your uh, your machine from some kind of uh, movable transport like that? For example, if somebody said, "Well, I want to block your your live stream on Starlink," uh, it's a little hard to do. Because, you know, how do you... It's a little hard to do. Because, <clears throat> you know, which satellite's going to block you and that changes every every so often. So you're going to have to be firewalled at some level by IPv6, which is always changing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. So there's some... Uh, yeah, so there's some privacy benefits just because of the limitations of the technology. Uh, what makes me laugh... Uh, nothing makes me laugh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I guess I've never looked at my channel as a laughing channel. Uh, so, <laughs> don't know the answer to that. So, uh, yeah. How long does it take to get Starlink? Uh, so, I signed up with Starlink and they said, you know, it'll take a year to get Starlink and then a few months later, they contacted me and said, we can fire you up right now. And I, and I did. I just signed up for it. It's kind of expensive. Uh, is it worth it? Um, you know, uh, for the current speed, no, broadband DSL is faster. Quite a bit faster. Uh, Starlink can offer you the faster version uh, for 250 bucks a month. They call that the enterprise version. <clears throat> so, in theory, if I want to live stream, I have to pay them two hundred fifty bucks a month. Right now, I'm playing, paying one twenty. Uh, what? Yeah, one twenty a month for my Starlink service, which uh, is a lot because I'm also paying ba uh, DSL. So, so basically, I'm paying double that. I suppose if I dump uh, DSL and just go straight. To Starlink, then it'll be the same price, 
uh, if uh, I go enterprise, but I, I don't know how how good their service is at enterprise if it's really as reliable as they say. So don't know. So uh, I'll think about it and see uh, if it's worth it going to the enterprise uh, version. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, out of time. And um, uh, I believe I told you this, but I, there will be no live stream in the first part of June. So I, I'm uh, uh, thinking uh, the first week and second week of June, there will be no live stream. Okay, so <clears throat> there will be videos uh, during that time. So the, the standard videos will appear just no live stream during that period. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'll talk to you in Brax Me. And uh, thank you for watching. And see you guys later.